Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I am mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too. We're continuing our discussion with Clarissa Pinkola Estes, who's reminding us how to be an elder. First of all, white hair doesn't make an elder. To be an elder, which is like the second adventure in your life, another kind of spiritual rebirth, it's not chronological, it's psychological. So whether you're 40 or 50, you don't have to wait until you're much older to be a wisdom figure and dispense medicine from your life to everyone you meet. <laughs> the three secrets that elders know is number one, you're born gifted, you'll never live an ordinary life. Number two, you're a one of a kind when it comes to your eccentricities. So accept the oddball in you and don't try to fit your square peg into a round hole, it'll never happen. And then three, get over the delusion of normalcy idea that you're going to live a life and be satisfied by containing yourself into something that's tiny and narrow. Your soul isn't puny, and you're not going to live in an orderly way. You accept the fact that you've been broken, that you're jagged, you've got threads all over, you got to tie them together. And the main emphasis of the elder is to transmit the unbounded life to the young, to teach them what living for spirit is all about, to mythically inoculate them. And in order to do that, you have to be what they call a recordadero, a rememberer, a rememberer of the old ways, a rememberer of the stories, a keeper of the old traditions. <laughs> and remember, stories happen to those who can tell them. So if you can tell a story, understand what's happened to you in order for you to be able to do that. Um, when you're an elder, especially the prone aspect of the elder for the females out there, Sometimes it's called la que sabe, she who knows, not no que sabe, she who doesn't know. And the elders represent a clear and present danger to the society because they teach the romantic imagination. They corrupt the youth by making the youth have vision. So they see with the squinty eye, and they also know how to bless people because they see the underlying motives of everything. They just want to see the truth of things, and they want you to see the truth of things. And there might be more to everything than meets the eye. So the elders are also perfect people who are willing to say, I'm not perfectly healed. I've had many run-ins in my life. I still got skin in the game. And uh, the whole life process has taken something from me. But it's also given me something that I may be able to recover from. And that something is of profound depth when they give it to other people. I'm going to make the usefulness of my own wound available. A wound is a wound through which you give birth to stuff. And then you realize that it's time to forgive and cancel all debt. No one owes me anything. No one has to make recompense. Now my heart is as soft as a baby's blanket. So heal your wounds as far as you can. Let the rest go. Haven't you suffered enough? I have. The expiration date on those things is so long overdue. It's in the past. Let them go. And once you do this, you get rid of the crud, the detritus, the effluvia in your life. As she says, focus where there's beauty and goodness. Do as much good to as many people as you can for as long as you can. And then you'll find out it's as easy as taking fresh dried bed sheets off the line.